No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for scary movies that say to the audience, we see you. Since such fourth wall breaks can affect the plot, there's a spoiler warning in effect. Thanks for uh, being decent. Oh, it's the least I can do. Number 10, Creep Show. You're hysterical, Henry. It's just what I would have expected. <laughs> no, I don't think you'll expect this, Wilma. No, this is going to be an entirely new experience. A love letter from Stephen King and George Romero to 1950s EC horror comics, Creepshow presents itself in the style of a comic book. Each segment of the anthology gets an intro that looks like something out of a Tales from the Crypt comic. You see that crap? All that horror crap? Things coming out of crates and eating people? Dead people coming back to life? People turning into weeds, for Christ's sake? Well, yes, I did, but I... Well, you want them reading that stuff? Within that framing device, the creep, a robed grim reaper type figure, addresses the audience like a narrator, as if we were reading the comic. The wraparound, where a kid gets revenge on his father for getting rid of his comic book, is even revealed to be part of the comic itself. Ready for another shot, Dad? <laughs> Number nine, the woman in black. Stay there! I'm gonna come and get you! In this film produced by Hammer Studios, a young lawyer, played by Daniel Radcliffe, comes across a malevolent spirit that is responsible for the deaths of several children around the village. Radcliffe's character learns of the eponymous woman in black and tries to stop her from claiming more innocent lives. She makes us... She makes us do it. She makes us they took her boy away so now she takes us at first it appears as though the movie has a bittersweet ending with radcliffe's character being welcomed into the afterlife by his dead wife but in the final shot the rug is pulled out from under us daddy who's that lady The woman in black appears and looks directly at the audience, as if she's going to haunt us next. Number eight, student bodies. Why do they always run away from me? It's the galoshes. They're a dead giveaway. Why do I wear them? It isn't even raining. This early 80s parody poked fun at contemporary slashers such as Halloween and Friday the 13th, featuring a serial killer known as The Breather. Take a guess how he got that name. I killed everybody, and I'm glad. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. What makes your voice sound so funny? I'm disguising it, Smack. How? By talking through a rubber chicken. I thought it sounded like you were speaking through a rubber chicken. The satire gets surreal, with captions that label things they want the audience to pick up on. This movie deconstructed the tropes that were associated with horror films at the time. I'd like to make a special appeal to the killer. Hasn't there been enough senseless killing? Let's have a murder that makes sense. One of the most prominent ways student bodies broke the fourth wall was by having a random character swear explicitly with the goal of earning the movie an R rating. Number seven, Sinister. There's been another one, hasn't there? I think so, yes. Tell me everything you can. This supernatural thriller has one of the most depressing endings in horror history. A child who has been corrupted by the demon Bagul murders her entire family. I like that you made the movies longer. They're better this way. As the final shot pulls out, it's followed by an effective jump scare where Bagul pops out of nowhere. The demonic figure had just victimized Ethan Hawke's character and his family after he got done watching all the Super 8 films left by the monster. And since we have seen the tapes, the film implies that Bagul has set his sights on us. Number six, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. An adaptation of a Broadway musical that is heavily reliant on audience participation is obviously going to bring down the fourth wall. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. 
A criminologist interrupts the film to provide a monologue to the audience, and Dr. Scott turns to address the audience during the dinner scene. Tim Curry as Dr. Frankenfurter makes a few gestures that heavily imply he knows the audience is there, adding to a delightfully shameless performance. We don't want to be any worry. Well, you got caught with a flat world. How about that? Well, babies, don't you panic. Fourth wall breaks are usually associated with comedies that have a lighter tone. Rocky Horror is very much a horror comedy, so those breaks suit it perfectly. <laughs> He was in with a bad crowd, but it was worse than I imagined. Aliens. Huh? Dr. Scott! Number 5. American Psycho In this satirical slasher, Patrick Bateman tells the audience about who he is and what his values are in voiceover narration. When I get to Paul Allen's place, I use the keys I took from his pocket before disposing of the body. There is a moment of sheer panic when I realize that Paul's apartment overlooks the park. And it's obviously more expensive than mine. Through this internal monologue, we get an inside track into Bateman's mind we would not have gotten otherwise. One notable example is the business card scene. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. Bateman feels such pressure to put on a mask to conform to society's expectations that this fourth wall break is really the only way to get a sense of who he is. At least that would be the case, if not for the fact that he's a psychopath who may have actually lied about committing all of those crimes. So he's a bit of an unreliable narrator. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. This confession has meant nothing. Number four, The Cabin in the Woods. Oh my god. I want a reality TV show. <laughs> my parents are gonna think I'm such a burnout. Another satire that pokes fun at horror movie tropes, The Cabin in the Woods has plenty of nods to the audience, with a script co-written by Joss Whedon. It makes a point of using classic stock characters such as the Jock, the Virgin, and the Stoner. There are also plenty of Easter eggs littered throughout the film, particularly among the monsters set loose in the underground facility. He had the conch in his hands. Know, you know, in a couple more minutes, who knows what might have happened. I, was... I am never gonna see a merman. Ever. Two would be thankful. Those things are terrifying. The cleanup on him is a nightmare. Though the film never explicitly breaks the fourth wall, it does flirt with it. The people operating the controls behind the scenes even make some ironic comments that reference the audience watching. I'm Tilly. Oh! Okay, guys, that's it. Let's go. We got a job to do. Your basic human needs disgust me. Get out of here. Number three, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I thought you killed Freddy off. Well, we did, but the fans. You know, the fans, God bless them, they're clamoring for more. I guess evil never dies, right? For the last Elm Street sequel before Freddy vs. Jason, Wes Craven decided to shake things up with Freddy Krueger. New Nightmare blurs the lines between reality and horror, with appearances from people associated with the Elm Street franchise, including Robert Englund, producer Robert Shea, and Wes Craven himself. Now, I swear to you, I'm going to stay by this computer and keep writing until I finish the script, but when that time comes, you're going to have to make a choice. Choice? What kind of choice? Whether or not you're willing to play Nancy one last time. The film pulls back the curtain to recreate a production behind the scenes, which was a pretty unique take before the Scream franchise came along. The plot, in which the only way to contain the entity of Freddy Krueger is to make a new movie, is so meta, it's like a snake eating its own tail. Would you call Robert? Robert? Robert England. You know, the guy who plays Freddy. Freddy who? Freddy Krueger! Nancy, Freddy's dead. Number two, Funny Games. Warmer. 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 Cold. A home invasion thriller where two adolescent boys terrorize a vacationing family, Funny Games is as disturbing as it is unconventional. For both the original 1997 film and the 2007 American remake, the fourth wall is broken a handful of times in effective ways. One of the villains addresses the audience to make a bet with them. They don't want to bet. Well, it's not an option. 
There has to be a bet. I mean, what do you think? You think they stand a chance? Well, you're on their side, aren't you? Who are you betting on, hmm? He also deconstructs typical movie plots to gauge the audience's expectations. And we can't forget that wink that the young man makes to the camera at the very end of the original film, right before he starts to terrorize a new family. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Scream. Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Well, well, the first one was, but the rest sucked. The script from Kevin Williamson is full of references to the horror genre and moments of irony. One of the most memorable examples is the scene where Randy yells at Jamie Lee Curtis to look behind you while failing to do so himself. Jamie, look behind you. Look behind you. Turn around. Behind you. I'll oh, turn <laughs> behind you. Behind you. Randy comes the closest to figuring out that they're all in a movie, but it could just be a delusion resulting from his obsession with films. The Scream series continues to get more self-referential once the Stab movies are introduced within its universe, and the sequels get to comment on themselves. Are you suggesting that someone's trying to make a real-life sequel? Stab 2? Who'd want to do that? Sequels suck. Hey, no, no. Wow. Come on, man. Oh, please, please. By definition alone, they're inferior films. What do you think about fourth wall breaks in horror movies? Have they ever creeped you out, or do they take you out of the movie? Let us know in the comments. Why'd I have to go and dig up Jason? Some folks have a strange idea of entertainment. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.